There we go. Welcome back. This is Lifted Noise. If you haven't been to my channel, what I do here is NPC Live tutorials, be making videos and samples. I share those every once in a while, but today I'm doing something different, something I didn't think I'd ever do. I'm doing an unboxing. This is a piece of gear that's going to streamline my workflow. It's an addition to the NPC Live. It's going to make things a lot easier and make me more productive, which is important because efficiency, when time is limited and you're trying to reach your goals and reach your dreams, is a very important factor to actually get in there. So in order to start the new year off right, I bought a couple of pieces of gear. The Akai Midi Mix is one of them. That's what I'm unboxing today. And the other is a piece of furniture. It's the Onstage WS7500 workstation. And I'm very happy with it because now I have a place for everything. All my essential studio tools. Before I was working with a Walmart foldable table, just a plastic table, and was really cluttered trying to get all of this stuff on it. I do recommend this, it's sturdy. It's pretty easy to build. One thing that was a factor with me buying it is I wanted the, the pullout keyboard tray to fit my keyboard. So I have a 49 key micro key air, which is 27 inches long. And I couldn't find the actual information on the, uh, the length or the width of the keyboard tray online. So I went into like a guitar center and they told me it was 27 inches long, which sounded perfect. And so I went ahead and purchased it. But just to note, if you do have one of these, one of these Korgs, the uh, cables actually go on the side. So 27 inches isn't quite enough for you to be able to push the keyboard tray in because then you have this uh, just hitting right here. But I'm leaving it at this position and that's not a problem for me. It still allows me to push it in and then I have access to my MPC Live. Uh, the Akai MIDI mix that I'm gonna unbox, I have a little place in mind right here for it. Wanted to go ahead and unbox this, how it comes from zounds.com in case you do decide to purchase from them. So this is the box. Inside will be the actual Akai MIDI mix box. I'm gonna open this up. Oh, we got good padding in there. And here we go. This is the Kai Midi Mix. It includes Ableton Live Lite, if you're interested in that. That's something I'm gonna skip. I did purchase this for use with the MPC Live, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up to the desk and then show you guys what else is included in the box just to see what it looks like, because I know y'all love that kind of thing, right? I'm gonna cut this open first. Let's take a look at the back. Midi Mixer to control your virt virtually any DAW and the MPC Live, hopefully it works. Eight individual line faders, one master fader, 24 knobs, a range three per channel, 16 buttons arranged in two banks, provide mute, solo, and record arm functionality per channel. Send all mixer settings to your DAW with a single button press. One-to-one uh, -one mapping with Ableton Live, which is included as I stated. All right, box contents, MIDI mix, the light software, USB cable, user guide, safety warranty and manual. Cool. So, I'm getting right here. <laughs> yeah. All right, so here's what we got inside. As it said, we got MIDI cable, user manual, and a download card for Ableton Live 9 Lite version. Alright, usual kind of foam wrapping and feels pretty heavy so far. I think I kind of imagined that, I'm just going to do that, I kind of imagined that it would be lighter than this, so that's actually a pleasant surprise. It feels sturdy. See that? It is pretty heavy. I mean, these feel fine. They're um, they don't come out easy. I'm trying to pull them out, the little faders. The buttons are made of rubber. It's a nice feel to it. 
And then we got our knobs. They all feel pretty sturdy. So ideally what I want to do is look at this, um, each one of these channels. As far as the live goes, my thought is to use these per pad. So um, these will be my first eight pads on the MPC live. And then you actually have the ability to bank over. So bank right. So this will be a whole nother set of uh, tracks or pads in my case. So it'll be the next uh, top eight. So of course, this is going to be the level per track or per pad. And then I'll probably do panning uh, with these bottom knobs. And then I think that maybe effects um, such as, you know, my send and return. I'll have like reverb set to use the control with these. And that's my initial thought, but this is just kind of going to be an experiment and I'll see how, where it leads me. Thinking maybe also another thought is possibly using the faders um, to control submixes. To be honest, I use probably uh, one to two submixes and mostly on my drums because I feel like some bus compression on your drums really fattens things up. I'm going to try to program this stuff. Hopefully I have a good result. So someone might be wondering why I purchased this thing when I could just use possibly the Q-Link knobs. But there is a lot of, you know, clicking around and switching. I want something that's dedicated to my mix process so that I don't actually have to jump into the mix window. I could be creating, I can be composing, uh, programming, and I could be turning levels down and panning things as I do it all in one go. So this is supposed to streamline that whole process. After the unboxing, I wanted to take a moment to kind of figure out the MIDI mix. And I took about like an hour to program all these eight little faders and knobs and stuff for eight pads. I think it was that I assumed that the bank left and right would just automatically work without doing any programming to it. But I was wrong. Rather than having the ability to have unlimited tracks that I can program using the bank and left, I had to look at it from a different perspective, from a limited perspective of just having eight channel strips to program to control my MPC live. So this is what I have and I'm kind of proud of it. I've always wanted one of these messy looking uh, mixing boards and this is somewhat of a mixing board, although it's a MIDI controller. I started to uh, label everything. It's kind of janky. I have this labeled and I kind of do create tracks that are really only eight tracks at a time. Sometimes they'll go up to nine or 10. So I figured I could make this work. I have my first channel is my kick. Second is my snare. I have hats. I've got two pads on there. Symbols. I also have two pads that it's controlling. Then I have all of these drum sounds going into a sub mix. So this, um, my fifth fader in strip, this is my, my drum sub mix. Um, for the sixth, um, I use bass line a lot. So I ran the, uh, the synth plug in bass line through submix two and so i have a combination of some things going on there and then for number seven i have i labeled it chords and then eight melody now these are also submixes so that whenever whatever key group i bring in i can just send that through submix three or submix four and then i'll have um, control of those things and some of the parameters i haven't programmed my my last channel strip so i'll go through and program a little bit to show you something so there is some value to you here if you're interested in getting a mini mix but i want to show you some of the other um things that i did program already so later down the line i might figure out a way how to program the bank and left and have more tracks available to me but since i don't i have a limited amount of eight tracks here i had to look at this um, from that perspective and program only what's essential to my workflow and what's going to actually make my workflow speed up initially I was going to do, well, I had these set to levels and they are set to levels per um, pad or submix. And then I was going to do panning up here. But since I have a kick and a snare, which is always dead center, I decided to actually program this differently. For my kick, I have a filter. It's like a, a cutoff point. And if I turn this. It is uh, cutting off some of the highs. And then I do a lot of layering with my drums. So I set um, the tune for uh, layer one and layer two. So bringing this up. And then I did the same thing pretty much for my snare. But I also uh, added a, I sent this top one through a send. So I have reverb for my snare.
for my hi hats. Um, delay. So um, this is using sends one and two. For my symbols, I have a tune control overall for all layers, and then something I use a lot is I'll have a reversed symbol right here, and I'll use a filter gate, and this is the rate setting, so I can kind of mess around with that. And it works well as like some sort of a riser and a transition change. The way I set this one up, this is my all drums submix. So I really set the threshold and the gain. And then I also have a reverb as well. For my bass, I have another filter, like a low pass cutoff. Let me see, let's move over to it. So I'm using bass line. I also chose to have control of the sub octave settings and then also the waveform. For my sub mix number three for this, um, I set up a pad setting. Um, this is like a high pass filter and reverb, so that's going through send. And then my last one I wanted to do some programming with just so I can document it and show you guys. So let's go ahead and do that. Over to the MPC Live, you go into menu and MIDI control. So you want to go to MIDI Learn. I have all these programmed already. Going to the bottom. So to do a new program, um, you want to hit the plus sign. And so I'm going to be programming submix number four so i'm going to scroll all the way over until i see submix number four okay and then target um doing volume and then you all you have to do is press learn go over to your midi controller and push it touch it turn it whatever it is so i'll show you and i'll tell you right now i am as soon as i press it you'll see that it reads the movement of that fader. I wanted to show you how to program the mute button. Um, so back in the MIDI control, um, I'm gonna do another one, and then I'm going to submix four again. There's a lot of scrolling with this. This can take a minute to do, um, but it's worth it in the end. So target, I'm going mute, learn, and press the mute button. So now, um, by default, the type is set to note. So if I go over to channel mixer and I look at my submix four and I press mute, it's only muted as I hold it. So in order to have it mute out by a single press, you wanna change the type to toggle button. So I'm going over to channel mix press the mute button, it will stay muted. So there it is, I'll leave you all at that. I wanted to give you a bit of a demonstration so you can see what the possibilities are with something like the MIDI mix. I had an idea of what I wanted to do with it and then it didn't work out so I had to get a bit creative and look at it in a different way. One thing I might say about this, that's not precise. It might be necessary to go in and do things manually. Um, with the Q-Links and the shift button, because when you hold the shift button, you can do more precise changes and adjustments within the parameters and sides. It should speed up a lot of the menu diving uh, while I'm creating, so. So thank you everyone for joining me. Once again, it's Lift the Noise, my name's Raul. Stay humble, lift noise, God bless, peace.